It have been a fourth page, somewhere around there. On your end page, write this. Leukemia, lymphoma, and write multiple myeloma, and realize that all of them are going to present the same way. And. So all of them have anemia, neutropenia, and thrombocytopenia. But with multiple myeloma, you have high calcium. That's the only difference between those three. Multiple myeloma, you have high calcium in the blood. Let me be real clear. High calcium is the blood. High calcium in the blood. Diagnosis, bone marrow biopsy. Signs and symptoms consistent with ant. So with the anemia, you're tired, right? With neutropenia, you have a low grade fever, chills. With thrombocytopenia, bruising, fatigue, yeah, you already know it. Okay. Now, for multiple myeloma, this is the only one I want you to put a rhyme. The nursing care includes hydrate. Teach patient to ambulate, radiate, and medicate. Medicate is for the pain and with chemo. Radiate, radiation, ambulate, drives the calcium from the blood into the bone, ambulate drives calcium from the blood into the bone, hydrate, flush the calcium out. That's a rhyme. Hydrate, ambulate, radiate, medicate. It is terminal. You will usually die from this and it's very painful. Charles has an uncle over this. Very, very painful. Last but never least, find any page you want, probably the last page of right, radiation. I told you that chemo is systemic. Radiation gives you local side effects. So radiation gives you local side effects. So wherever I angle the radiation, that's where the side effects are going to be. If it's brain cancer, then everywhere in here is going to be affected, right? It's my brain. So it's local. If I do uh, breast cancer, everything from here to here will be affected. Now when I say local side effects, burns and drying of skin, that's the local side effects. Remember I told you that chemo was systemic, remember? Mm -hmm. Yes. This is local. So if I do radiation here to here, like my mama had, chafed nipples, red, bright red throughout all it is, uh, burn, right? Burn your skin. It does not hurt at the time. It's painless at the time. It's an x-ray, right? So it's painless. But then days later, bright red burns, chafed skin, sometimes bleeding nipples. Depending on how bad the radiation was, you could crack a rib. So fractured ribs, because it's drying out the bone, making it brittle. You may cough, because it's your lungs, so your lungs get this radiation. So you might be coughing for the next two months. So I had radiation on my thyroid. And I had a sore throat, because what? Local. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it did close up, and I ended up in somebody's hospital, but whatever. So, you know, local. Brain cancer, you're going to have dry eyes, bleeding nose, dry mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Zero stoma. Let me make sure you know that. What is zero stoma? Mm -hmm. Dry mouth. What is stomatitis? Mouth sores, not infection. 
stomatitis and zero stoma. This patient needs saline mouthwash, I mean saline gargles. So saline, big mama called a salt water shit. Saline gargles. Lidocaine ointment my mama had, she had lidocaine ointment, I remember that. So lidocaine ointment will make them not hurt. You're checking her for thrush. So oral candidiasis, right? Mm -hmm. Thrush. Now, there are two types of radiation. One is teletherapy, that's the kind I just told you about. The other is brachytherapy. Teletherapy and brachytherapy. Teletherapy is just x-ray radiation. Every day, half hour, for a few weeks. Every day, one half hour, a few weeks. I'm going to take 15 minutes to a half hour. Or however many weeks you might need. Eight weeks, 12 weeks, whatever. Brachytherapy is internal radiation. That's the beads, the seeds, the rods, the wires, the capsules, whatever. Pills, implants, beads, seeds, rods, wires, capsules, implants, whatever. It goes inside of you. Generally, we use it for below the waist cancers. Reproductive cancers generally. So prostate cancer, cervical cancer, bladder cancer. Reproductive cancers. It is normal to have black necrotic tissue come out on the toilet paper when the patient wipes. Normal. It is normal to make sure the patient remains on bed rest with the Foley catheter in, because if they sit up on a bedpan, they could push the beads out. So clear liquid diet, Foley catheter in, bowel prep done, so they don't have to poop or push a bead or rod or seed out. So bowel prep done, bed rest, Foley catheter. The nurse has only 30 minutes and 24 hours she can go in the room. And per shift, 10 minutes. So that's 30 total in 24, 10 per eight hour shift. Your limit in the room in the eight hour shift is 10 minutes. 30 total in 24 hours. You wear a badge a radiation badge to take and track all the radiation you're receiving because it's a risk. So you gotta wear a radiation badge, a film badge. You don't share that badge and let people get to the cafeteria with it. It's your badge. So it keeps track of all the radiation you have. And then you also have to remember that we don't, uh, we want any visitors to stay six feet away from the patient. The patient has to be pretty self-sufficient. In other words, they give themselves a bath. They, write, they do their own peri care, because you ain't doing it. That's where the beads are. If a bead seed rod implant capsule wire falls out, you're going to put lead gloves on, grab the tongs, and put it in the lead container, even though NCLEX 4000 says you don't. <laughs> Remember, I've done every question on every software. Mm -hmm. So again, put the lead gloves on, get the tongs, grab the seed wire capsule, implant, whatever, put it in the lead container. In some states, you're not allowed to do that. In the state you are, that's why the software is wrong. You do a lot of patient care through a television, Skype or whatever you want to call it, telecommunication, because ain't nobody trying to go in that room. And when you do, you stay at the head of the bed. You don't go nowhere below that waist. You stay at the head of the bed. This patient is radioactive. The urine in their stool is not radioactive. So an aid could empty it without a problem, the Foley bag, but the patient is radioactive. The urine and the stool are not radioactive. I've had 
you guys work in this as an aide, ask me, is it okay if you're pregnant? Yes, it is. If it's a nurse, no, it's not. So an aide, yes, a nurse, hell no. 